Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Government receives 135 billion in EU support for agriculture, poverty, eradication. Germany now EU's worst polluter. And Europe cries foul on Indian whiskey. UK to review EU ban on Indian mangoes, plus the EU marks 1.5 million euros for sustainable organic agriculture in Iran. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the UNIT Nightly News. First up, the top story from our homepage. Government receives 135 billion in EU support for agriculture and poverty eradication. The European Union has dispersed over 135 billion euros to support government efforts to improve agribusiness, infrastructure and trade development. This donor aid occurred simultaneously to last week's signing of a 2.3 million euro maritime security improvement memorandum of understanding between the EU and the East African community. Speaking at the fund handing over the ceremony, Dar es Salaam, the European Union ambassador to Tanzania, and Filberto Sergabroni said the funds will support economic growth and better the well-being of people and signifies the friendship and goodwill between Tanzania and the EU. Sebregundi went on to explain that the funds will be used to stimulate sustainable economic growth and poverty reduction in the country, as well as foster Tanzania's position in the East African community. Now, the stories on EU funding into the African continent just keep rolling onto our news desks. And frankly, folks, we're stunned that no one in the mainstream media is even questioning this narrative. What we are seeing is not philanthropic aid, it is the last wranglings of the imperial triage between China, the USA and the European Union over who can secure the biggest slice of the African resources pie. Shocking how the EU and the US are paying for it all with taxpayers' credit card. Germany is now the European Union's worst polluter. Germany is the European Union's worst polluter, with its production of CO2 gases from fossil fuel rising by 2% in 2013 to 760 million tonnes, official data showed on May 7th. The EU statistics agency Eurostat found that while emissions were cut across the 28-member bloc by an average of 2.5% in 2013, they actually went up in six countries, including Germany. Now, this story on our website goes into the figures in more detail, and it's worth taking a look ahead of our live table talk show on Thursday, where we'll be discussing energy. Our show, Energy, What's All the Fracking Nuclear Renewable Oil Gas Coal Fusion About?, has been moved to a new time of 3 p.m. That's 2 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time for those of you that want to watch from outside the UK. It will be live on our homepage, on our YouTube and Google Plus channels. So if you'd like to join us on the panel, then do drop us a line via our contacts page or connect with us on Google Plus. Europe cries foul on Indian whiskey. Legal action has been launched against companies who import extremely worrying quantities of Indian whiskey in the European Union, which is then mixed and sold as inexpensive blended whiskey. The Scotch Whiskey Association said it became aware of a large quantity of Indian whiskey being imported into the EU since 2009. It has raised the issue with the EU Commission and Enforcement Authorities in France, Spain, Belgium and the Netherlands. And over a period of four years, the association traced the import of four and a half million litres of Indian whisky, which, if mixed with genuine whisky to produce these blended whiskies, could have produced 25 million bottles. <laughs> Reminds me of that fantastic old black and white movie, Whiskey Galore. UK to review EU ban on Indian mangoes. The Intellectual Property Rights Attorneys Association here has welcomed the British Parliament's decision to go into the controversial European Union ban on the import of mangoes from India and go through India's inspection process to prevent pest and insecticide presence in export materials. 
At the end of a special session to debate the mango ban and the UK's role in solving the issue on May 8th, Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Dan Rogerson had said the government would take a decision on the matter after going through the entire process of inspection, which the Indian government is following for preventing pests and other harmful insecticides with regard to export materials to other countries. Now, Vaz called for immediate action and said... The EU has treated an important trading ally, which represents a sixth of the population of the globe, India, with disrespect. Britain is India's best friend in the EU, and we need to do a much more responsible job. We have a responsibility as a government to make sure that the ban is resolved and, as Parliament, to scrutinise the decisions of the EU. If we do not act now, in my view, we will regret this forever, he said. EU earmarks 1.5 million euros for sustainable organic agriculture in Iran. The European Union has allocated a 1.5 million euro budget for the development of sustainable development of organic farming in Iran, a senior official announced on Sunday. 1.5 million euros has been earmarked by the European Union for development of sustainable organic agriculture in Iran. Executive Secretary of the Second International Conference of Trade Development and Organic Pro Products, Mohamed Rez Adekani, said in a meeting with the chairman of the International Organic Agricultural Society in Tehran on Sunday. So folks, more external aid and investment from the EU's limitless abyss of cash? Crank up those Heidelbergs for another round of money printing, Mr Draghi. Now, in other news, I wanted to highlight the UK's national media coverage of the government's announcement yesterday of new legislation designed to protect and encourage voluntary workers throughout Britain. The details of the legislation are in our legislation section, but the main thrust is to protect volunteers from being sued, amongst several other things. Now, as usual, mainstream media presents this as our government in Westminster proposing and implementing these new laws. Well, of course, as usual, it's not the case. We reported on this new EU legislation about five months ago, and as you can see from our legislation section, this is EU law. Another perfect example of how the media and spin doctors attempt to create a disconnect between the legislator and the legislation. Check out the article on our website. The links are below. Now, finally, do remember to put a note in your diary for Thursday, 3 p.m., live on our website, the Table Talk Live show. I'm looking forward to seeing you there, and if you'd like to be a guest on the panel, then please do get in touch with us via our website. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>